Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Happy this afternoon to rise and make a contribution uh, and support Labor's position of supporting uh, this as it passes through the Parliament. Uh, and as already outlined, we have some questions and also some expectations in the um, subject to it being successful uh, with its implementation and ongoing management. Uh, I want to acknowledge um, that as the uh, previous member mentioned, it makes sense. It's practical. Uh, it improves what is currently a network of significant pieces of infrastructure that are sometimes in competition with each other, um, sometimes seeking to do similar things and then have to decide and continue to reinforce that north-south often um, competition that happens in terms of what will happen where and why, uh, and also takes away a burden on... Uh, sometimes a small community carrying a large financial responsibility for a region and for the state. And so practically this makes sense. Uh, I just want to acknowledge, however, uh, in the Premier's second reading speech, some acknowledgements around the complexity of implementing something that seems fairly simple. Uh, and as has been mentioned, if it does successfully bring in two stadiums, um, then it may be partially useful if it can bring in four stadiums as uh, hoped for, then that's when it really comes to have some strength. But it's complex in terms of its governance and the responsibilities of those people that will be uh, required to have their board oversight. Where you're actually asking <clears throat> an organisation to be commercially minded and also uh, consider community need, it's complicated. So where there's a recognition that the new entity will act commercially, be responsive and flexible in decision making and understand the physical, social, economic and community connections that the major stadiums have within the state, um, that's a lot to ask of an organisation that's been um, required to balance being commercially focused and having a community mind. And when we go through um, the responsibilities that say... Uh, that the board are required to operate in a commercial manner that maximises value for the state. I think that then does become complex when that board of directors are considering the challenges of financial responsibility and being able to manage financial assets or assets that are often um, enablers of economic development in a region but are actually financially um, resource intensive. So that would be the first thing that I think... Um, it makes sense why that's required, but it will be actually difficult in practice to implement. Particularly where, um, and being from Bass, being from Launceston, one of the assets that identified is the University of Tasmania Stadium, or as we love to call it, York Park, um, where we're taking assets, we're not moving them, but where we're taking them out of sort of community ownership and handing them into um, a board which has a bespoke piece of a bespoke, not a bespoke, a bespoke Bespo piece of legislation. Um, <laughs> the community do love um, having access and responsibility and ownership, even though it's burdensome. Burdom, 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 Thanks, <laughs> Burdomson. Um, problematic <laughs> for a local community. And so um, one of the expectations going forward is that uh, when these ministerial statements are provided, when the direction is given to the board, that this community-minded aspect continues to ensure that decisions are made in the best interest of the state for whether it be sporting events or whether it be um, entertainment events, that local communities and the benefit that used to be provided by a local community, for instance, in northern Tasmania, where we specifically had a cool season strategy around having events there in the winter and harder months for hospitality, for tourism, um, that those sorts of things are still maintained in the configuration of who has what, where and when, because that is actually vitally important and where these um, assets that are financially draining actually make their economic impact um, into a small community. So I suppose that's the first um, suite of comments that I wish those people that are appointed um, subject to this being successful to that board well um, and recognise that the task will be challenging. And when we're talking about transitioning these sort of community assets across to statewide management, there's also been a recognition in the... Um, in speaking to this bill that we're talking about assets that have 
potentially in the future, a focus on only elite level um, or high level, say, sporting or entertainment events. And that we know that these facilities in small communities and in local communities have always been part of that pathway. And again, um, uh, reading from what the uh, Premier said earlier, that we know that these are providing pathways for people to compete at the highest level in sporting codes in, a tr in truly Tasmanian teams. It, but it will stimulate greater grassroots sporting participation and generate outcomes that will help build a more active and healthy Tasmanian population. So if we're going to stimulate greater grassroots activity, we already know that um, grassroots and local community assets are completely overwhelmed. Um, we know that there is much to be invested in terms of being able to create those environments where um, particularly young people and children have access to uh, quality local facilities. And there was a... Um, a correlation drawn earlier between not wanting to invest heavily in sporting facilities when we've got so many challenges in community. Um, one of the things that I love about sport and, and about facilities like this is that it, it often provides a sporting pathway for a young person. Um, when we're talking about grassroots sports and young kids being able to use facilities and participate in sport, but it actually also um, creates social pathways, education pathways. It uh, creates community pathways, often for some young people, where sport is their only outlet to positive opportunity and positive engagement in a community. So where these elite facilities come under the management of a, an entity that's required to focus on the commerciality of it, um, we need to continue to recognise the importance of the community elements um, of these facilities and, um, and make sure that we don't um, see this as the answer to investment in sporting facilities, that we need to continue to deliver on uh, the commitments or the required commitments to develop community infrastructure. Um, and as the Premier said earlier, it is important to remember that while Stadiums Tasmania is focused on major public stadiums, this does not diminish the importance of other community-based assets operated by local communities or government. So again, drawing on my experiences in Bass, uh, particularly in Launceston, say with your park, um, there are current commitments and um, hopefully future commitments to further development of that space. And whether that be for um, cricket or football or rugby or soccer or basketball or whether one of the other assets, Silverdome, uh, is for netball, what we need to recognise is that there, is, there are at the grassroots much more that needs to be invested into facilities. I know that there was a report done recently and when I say recently, it's probably five more years ago now, uh, on the um, community-level facilities required, just say for basketball, an area that I know, and we had a shortage of, and I think the number was about 12 courts that we were short, and I know there's facilities being developed in a lot of the suburbs, there'll be facilities hopefully developed in this major facility, depending on the decision of the board that oversees these facilities in the future. Um, but we're still short. We've got a facility like Elfin, and I, and I asked the question, is there ever um, consideration in the future that if Elfin was redeveloped to have baseline quality courts for the number of kids that are growing in, say, basketball, for that to be incorporated into this entity where the network of facilities is not just recognised for elite sport and events, but for, as it's been recognised here, the pathway towards um, outcomes so people can participate at this level. So a young person that wants to play basketball needs to have a court to play on to start, which is not safe for an under 12 or 14 at 10 o'clock at night. Um, and then they can go to, say, the Tawns, and then they can go to, say, the Jack Jumpers, but wouldn't again be lovely at a facility like this managed for the state where there's a WNBL team and women's support is also um, heavily invested in. So I can see where it might be practical and it might be useful. It is a little bit complex and it's probably the right approach. From a former local government perspective, I know that being able to take these significant assets off the balance sheet of local government is positive in those communities, but I recognise there's still negotiations to go on, um, say particularly with the City of Launceston, Clarence and Cricket Tasmania. And that takes me to a question that our Shadow Treasurer asked earlier. There were comments in the um, second reading speech around responsibilities of the new entity um, uh, where the responsibilities to own, acquire, manage, operate, maintain, plan for, invest in and facilitate future development of the facilities that um, are under this board. 
but there was no comment uh, in the second reading speech about how assets are disposed of. And I recognise in um, sec uh, section seven, I think it is, um, there was a, a number two, it talks about disposal, but I would love if when the Premier speaks later, he could describe the process of disposal. So for instance, if this entity having been required to operate um, with commerciality decides to sell an asset under its responsibility, they just say they sell Blunston Arena because it'd be a great location for apartments. Um, what's the process of consideration? What are the protections for that? Um, because it, it says in here that it can only be done with the approval of um, the minister and the treasurer. But as our shadow treasurer said, what's the scrutiny over those sorts of decisions, either at in real time or later? And what are the protections for the community, whether that is the right decision, even though it's been independently handed to the responsibility of this board? I think that's something that people would be interested in um, having clarified further. So for me, um, it does make sense. It's a practical instrument. Tasmanian Labor do support it. Uh, it takes away that sort of north-south rivalry, which I sometimes I think is useful and interesting, no. sometimes creates a good story. <laughs> that um, exist. But what it will require is that whomever sits on this board um, we will be responsible, you know, in my case, to the northern community that we continue to have um, those economic benefits, particularly in the cooler months, um, with strategies of implementing sporting and other events um, in those times that really matter and that it doesn't prevent a young kid getting on the turf and having that experience in an elite facility and that it doesn't excuse future investment in community facilities in order to provide the pathways so that we can have Tasmanians playing at the top of their game in these sorts of um, codes that we see playing here. So we've got Tassie footballers and we've got Tassie basketballers and we've got Tassie soccer players um, being able to participate and being supported all the way through so they can actually experience what it's like um, to be out there in the centre of the field in one of these facilities. They're the sorts of questions um, that we have, the support that we provide. Um, it makes sense. This bill has our support uh, and we would love some responses to those questions.